Do you find when it comes to practicing that when you're done, you walk away feeling like maybe I didn't get as much done as I could have, or I spent too much time focusing on one thing or another, or maybe you're like me and a lot of other people, you just spent some time noodling and called that practice. Maybe when it comes to practice time, you're not even in, into it and it's a, just a fight to pull you towards getting that done or drag you into getting into practice time in the first place. Well, today, let's talk about some great methods that you can incorporate to balance everything out to give you the most bang for your buck practice that's going to push you forward, give you progress, but also make it fun and engaging to draw you in so you'll want to do it every day. Let's have a think on that. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode. Today is a very great episode, especially when it comes to something that's gonna affect something you probably do every day or at least a couple times a week. Uh, it's something that I found that without putting focus and time into it, that it went to waste and wasn't getting the return. I expect, you know, we always talk about ROI in, in business, getting that return on your investment. But the same thing should be said about your time when it comes to being a musician and getting better and perfecting your craft and, and getting a return on what you're doing. Practice is extremely important. And I just want to come out first and foremost and say, before we even get started, there are much better and much smarter people, especially on YouTube or anywhere out in the world on this subject alone than me. So this is not me being a, a super authoritative on, on what the best things are. I mean, go to Rick Beato. That man will tell you exactly what you need to study, what you should be practicing, you know, what scales you should be hitting, what arpeggios are important. That guy knows everything. You should be listening to Rick Beato. But there's a part of me that looks at this, like a lot of things in life, that there needs to be a balance, that yin and yang. Um, and, and for me, it was always, you know, fundamentals and learning you know what's important scales arpeggio chord structures intervals all those things but having fun and you know kind of looking at the, those two things but the more that i delved into it and the more that i tried to give myself a rigid structure and something that i wanted to share with with all of you out there it came down to being that there's more than just a two-sided debate here and, and we're going to get into the structure in here and how you can do that. But I, I just, you know, as I listen to people like Rick Beato, who are, like I said, unbelievably the smartest people you're going to cut when it comes to music theory and how to apply, you know, that to getting the most out of your practice. I always feel myself pulling back saying, yeah, that's great, but I want to have fun. I also want to do this. I don't feel like I'm, I'm getting the most out of it. And the worst part for me, of course, is, I'm not going to want to do this every day. At some point, I'm just going to be like, oh, this is so boring. Or, you know, it's, it's like it's work. And, you know, everything is work, but you can make it more effective. But before we move on to what we've got here and how to, how to get that, make sure that you take a little time. As I'm looking around our studio right now behind us in the other part of the studio, uh, it is just jam-packed full right now <laughs> of equipment and products and cables and things that are going to get used and reviewed and how to's. So make sure that you give us a subscribe and a like. Don't miss any of that content coming out in the next couple of months. It's going to be really great. Um, I promise there'll be stuff that you can use. So again, give us that. Make sure you subscribe, follow us. Don't miss out on any of that. But let's move right into the episode. So the first thing here that's going to be popping up on screen real quick, and we'll let that be up there the whole time, is a Nice little uh, image that I've created, a Venn diagram for what I said. As I was saying, it's easy for me, especially at the early parts of my career and even recently, just to think of it as a two-sided coin of what's fun and you know what's effective and find some balance between the two. But when I sat down and made a little more structure for myself, I found myself finding that there's more of a four-sided thing going on here. And that's why I made it this Venn diagram so that it gives a visual representation if you were to sit down and map out how you're going to give yourself a nice structured practice routine, this is the exact starting point you want so that you can reference it instantly. So, of course, that's available down below, and it's a free PDF. It's through our Patreon. Go ahead and join our Patreon. Like I said, everything we do there, we give away for free. You're welcome to join and donate if you want, but that's not a requirement because we give everything away for free. We just want to see everybody succeed. So there, that's there in image form, and you can get that. I have it right here on me and my my little iPad so that I can reference it as we're going forward as well. And then, of course, down below that, also for free, uh, is the 
exact script I'm looking at. It's just the four steps there broken down into what I have as, as how to achieve the best practice routine and get that structure set. So you could pull that up. It has all the steps one by one of what you need to do, what's important, how to achieve these things. Um, and that's, that's really all you're going to need to get this done. And so, yeah, all there for free, go grab it. And like I said, if you're on the Patreon play, uh, page, go ahead and just join us. Uh, it's like I said, it's free, or you can become one of our patrons and, and, and help us and support the channel that way. That always helps. But let's talk about that diagram first. Uh, right there, like I said, there is the four ones. And they're not really in any particular order as, as to importance of the four circles. But let's just break them down very first. And, of course, the first one there on the top is structure. And like I said, we'll go deeper into all of these things. And on the, the side going down to the left here, we got goal setting. Obviously, that's extremely important. We talk about that a lot. We have many videos on that. But of course, you can't design a routine without having that, a practice routine without talking about what your goals are in the first place. The one at the bottom there is personalization, making, like, like I said, it's easy to go reference those much smarter people out there that know much more about a great practice routine, what it should involve especially music theory wise. Um, but the thing is that one, one size does not fit all when it comes to a practice routine. So you really have to have something catered to who you are as a person, you as a musician. And it, you know, it's as you're defining these other circles around it, it's so much easier to define this one here, this personalization, just because you already know what your goals are, you know, what your structure needs to be. And that last one over here on the other side, fun and engagement, like I said, that's a big, that was a big part to me that I have to have something that gives me a reason to light that fire, get that spark going as a musician, as an artist, that I have to be learning something that's really meaningful to me and that I can see a future use of. It's just the same thing as many people that went to school and, you know, maybe didn't connect as, as some other students did where it was. I understand what you're doing. Like you're just telling me things, but if I don't personally understand why or how this is going to apply to something, or I'm going to be using this or what the meaning behind it is, I'm not going to get into what you're doing. I'm not going to invest my time. So this is where putting those things together makes it work better for everybody else and, and makes you want to come back and keep doing that because there's that reason. There's that fun, that engagement, that spark is there for you. I'm just going to touch real quickly about, I mean, they're really self-explanatory, but you know, you, in a Venn diagram, you get those points where those, these circles, those things that we've defined as a group intertwine, and that's why it's important. So the first one we'll talk about here is structure and goal setting. Um, clearly it's just structured practice with goals when they overlap. I mean, you're having a repeatable system that every day you go to and that you're able to just walk in and say, it's practice time. Here's what I do. So that, you know, boom, 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 boom. It makes the daunting task of, of just, I don't want to do this. It's like, oh, you know, I just got to, oh, it's oh, so simple. I just follow my steps. I just, I just know what to do. I sit down and do it now. It becomes, uh, you know, a root memory and, and you just, you just do it. So the next one, the goal setting and then personalization, personalized goals. Clearly we just talked about that, how the more that you're doing all these, it's easy to get a more structured practice and then you're understanding what you need to get out of it then you'll have your own personalized goals as opposed to just like get better. You'll have things that are, are easier for you to, to do and to get results from. Uh, the next one's personalization and fun engagement circle there. Those going together give you the custom enjoyable practice. Now, again, I just touched upon it. If you're having a practice that's catered around you and you know that's going to light that fire or give you the, the returns on things that you want to see applied in your life, your music and everything going forward, you're going to get so much more out of it and you're going to keep coming back to do it on a daily or multi-time, you know, a week basis to get that done. The last intersection that we're talking about here is structure and fun and engagement. Engage, and that leads to engaging structured activities. And again, the same thing I was talking about with... Uh, you know, the, using the reference there of a student who just doesn't want to learn things because they don't understand. You can teach me all these algebraic formulas, but I, unless I'm using them and getting a practical understanding of what it's for, what does that mean to me? I'm not going to, I'm not going to memorize these. Uh, you know, that's, I, some people feel the same way, but it's just a good example of that. But, and then the most important part of a Venn diagram, of course, is where everything intercedes, where it all comes together, when these things all overlap, what does that mean? And the, following the arrow on the diagram here for you, when all four intersecting 
circles come together, you get a meaningful, enjoyable, and effective practice. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but it's easy. Like, as I said, like when you sit down to actually make a routine for yourself, build out a structure of something, it's so nice to just have a visual reference of, am I, am I making sure that I'm covering all my bases? You know, am I making sure that everything I, I've designed on what I need to do during my practice time is really developed around this? So next thing I want to go on to, and as like I said, go download that, get that, it's free. We're going to move on to the, the PDF that comes with it that has a breakdown of all of these with the step-by-step -step so that we can talk about that and make sure that you you have all that information for you. But the PDF, unlike the diagram, is in a structured manner of where you can follow these steps, go one by one. And as you write these out or whatever it is you do, like I mine is on my computer, I have a folder that is completely structured. It just says, I believe my, as I look over at my desktop for the studio, it just says guitar practice. And it's that's how I've had it set up. I know exactly what I need to go to, how to get into it. So. You know, however you decide to do this, I would recommend, of course, first writing it down in some fashion, be it on an app, be it on a notepad, be it on, you know, anything you have. Something that you can physically like, just pull up and reference for the first couple of times till it becomes that just a routine, just, you know, your memory just going through the steps because you can just pull up and do it. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you want. You want to get to that point where like an athlete, like a basketball player, which I know I reference basketball a lot because I love it, but, you know, they step up to the foul line and they can just, you know, drain 95 out of 100 free throws, not because of anything else, because they have some special super talent. It's because of the routine they built, because of all the, the reps and the shots they've taken. All those things have combined to form this muscle memory. And that's exactly what you're after with a, a, a really great practice routine It's just that instant muscle memory you're not thinking about it. you're not overthinking it. it just takes care of itself so first one on our pdf the most important thing to start with of course and as we've stated many times goal setting is key and if you don't understand it's just like taking a trip somewhere if you're it's fun to just drive around sometimes but you're never never really going to get anywhere you're not going to get anything done but if you have a roadmap of where you want to go you have an end destination that's the most important thing. So let's just take this for example. And it's as just simple as as simple as you would instantly think it would be. And it's broken down into your long-term goals, short-term goals, and micro goals. So as that same scenario, that example we were using uh, of a, a road trip and a car drive, whatever it may be, uh, the Long-term goal is your destination. So that's the end. You mark it on the map. That's where I'm going. You pull up your your app that's going to do your, your driving for you, give you the GPS. You type it in. That's your end destination. That's your long-term goal. And for this example, we can talk about musicians that are maybe, let's use a musician that wants to get out there and play live shows. They want to play a large concert to over a thousand fans. If I know to some of you that may sound ridiculous, like what's the problem here? But there's a lot of us and a lot of people out there that, are in the scenario of they haven't even played for 10 people. They haven't played for 100 people. That seems like a very lofty goal. So just use your, your imagination. Let's, use, let's just pretend that that's something that you need to reach for. And as a great long-term goal, that's fantastic. You can write that down. I want to be playing long, large shows for you know 1,000, 2,000 people. Then it comes down to you got to break that down. So as we're building a practice routine, what do I need to do to achieve this? And your short-term goals have to be, well, I have to build up an audience, build up a following, and I also have to put together a show that would, you know, draw in that many people. And what does that entail? That entails, you know, at least, you know, having some music, having a set list, uh, you know, at least a set number of hours, two to three hours of music to go, uh, and then you know, having you know merch, having all it, you could go on and on and on. But the most important when it comes to your practice, and as we're building a routine, you just heard in there that you have to have a, a certain number of songs. So that's great. That gives you your short term goals of I have to have this many songs. So we'll say that that's thirty songs I have to have together, just to have a nice little safety net and a good a good set list that I can play anywhere and have enough t time to back up whatever I'm doing. And so you just write that down. I need to have 30 songs. You could write down the songs you know, you know, from beginning to end that you know inside and out. 
And then you just, that's when you're ready. You know when your show's ready to go because you've hit those short-term goals using your practice routine. Now, micro goals are those tiny goals in between. So that's song by song. In this example, we said we needed 30 songs. Then you're going with your micro goals of today's practice routine is gonna involve me taking a song, breaking it down in its pieces and its parts, uh, the structure, uh, the the chords, the what scales work with this, all those kind of things. And then you just, every day you're taking on one song and then it just becomes smaller goals. Every day you're building up to this larger goal of, okay, I have a full set list. I'm ready to go out and start playing. I'm getting bigger shows. I'm ready to start booking it and reaching out to larger venues and bigger agents, all those kind of things. So that's just an example, but that's where you start with this whole thing with the goal setting. Start with your large goal, where you wanna be, see what the the short-term goals and what you're going to what your daily routine is going to be based on around those goals to achieve them you know write down step by step what do you need to achieve them and that's what's going to be going into your practice routine so now that we've got the goal set we've got the direction we've got the map the very next thing up is structure and that's when we're going to since we have all the goals we have what we need to do um, now you start writing down exactly how you're going to spend your time. And the important part here is to be realistic, be as real with yourself as you can possibly. If you know you can't dedicate two hours a day to something, don't say it's going to be two hours. Don't start setting goals for two hours a day because you're going to be instantly disappointed. You're going to walk away. None of this is going to work. None of it's going to matter. And it's just going to defeat you from the beginning. But realistically, if you're working towards goals, you should spend spend 45 minutes, you should spend an hour, you should spend two hours a day working on what you're doing uh, and you're spending pra- that time practicing and, and getting better. Um, so the minimum I would tell you at least is 45 minutes a day, at least probably an hour if you're being honest, if you wanna get somewhere and this is something you wanna truly pursue and get better at, at least an hour, two hours if you can manage it. I know life is difficult, but that's up to you. And of course, when it's those things, if you're smart about it, and you get this list done, you're able to, you, I, I know there's times in my life where it's really beneficial to break it down into to chunks. Like I can do an hour this at this point, an hour later, and you're still hitting all the points of what you've designed your practice routine to, routine to be, but you know, you just broke it up and you're able to, you know, I know I have an hour before I have clients coming into the studio that I can give to this. I have an hour after a, a mastering session that I can go dedicate to this, you know, right before bed you know, whatever it may be, you'll find time in your day, you can break those things up. But so we'll set a time. And just for simplicity's sake, we'll we'll give ourselves, you know, about an hour or so, but I've got five steps here of what should be included in in your practice room minimum, like what you should be doing when it comes to that time. And the first one is warming up. And now the first thing that you thought of if you play an instrument, or you sing or whatever it is, it was just to start singing scales or to do exercises or to, you know, play this, this, this one thing, you know, that, you know, gets the juices flowing. And we're talking about just five minutes of warm up of letting your body, you know, do the flexes or whatever it is. I was a guitar player. You see me doing this instantly. Like as soon as I, my head heard that, I said, start doing this, start doing this. I won't pop my knuckles here, but I usually am one of those, those annoying people that will pop their knuckles when, before I start doing my practice or my playing because it makes my fingers feel a little more limber. Uh, all those kind of things where you're just doing a little bit of stretching. If you're, if you're singing, you're going to be using your diaphragm. You're going to be using correct posture. These are the, you want to make sure whatever you're doing as a routine you're building in those right habits as you do them, because if you're doing them wrong now, you're gonna do them wrong then. Or if you ask your body to do it right in in the situation, it's not gonna know what to do because you've trained it to do something else. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, doing it the right way, get it warmed up. For me, I spent years of just playing and practicing on a chair. And then when it comes to playing live, I'm like, oh, my body's not used to being this. I'm not even used to seeing my guitar from this angle. And, And so you have to, be mindful of those kind of things and warm. so just I do a couple stretches and then I'll stand and then I'll get in the right the right posture so that I'm seeing when I play live I'm going to see the exact same thing when I play in a different situation then I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing you know in this exact same position so just be mindful that your your quick warm up revolves around that 
Now we go to that first thing that you thought about that. And I thought about instantly when I heard this and, th and thought about it was the, uh, the technical exercises. So those things that really get you into the, the flow of what you're doing, starting to get the, the brain uh, moving and pumping and doing all those kind of things. What you're doing, this is where you're doing your scales. This is where you're doing your arpeggios. This is where you're doing your, your warm up exercises and routines. Um, I, for me, I love doing arpeggios. I love doing scales. I'll run through my modes just because I love doing it. And then I have a special song that I learned when I was a kid. It's not special. It's just a, a, a generic Dave Matthews song, uh, Satellite. But it really makes my fingers have to think and stretch. You know, you're going six, seven frets at a time between stretches. And it's really fun. And it makes my fingers think and it makes my, my mind think. It makes my that connection between the two where... I have to hear and then be in a certain place, you know, just speaking as a guitar player, but I know what works for me. And, you know, I'll spend a good 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just letting myself get warmed up, hear the scales. And, you know, for me, especially as somebody who hasn't gone too deep into theory as some of the greatest professionals ever, I love hearing, you know, major, minor harmonics, different scales, just to hear the different intervals and start to get the feel and the flow of where I'm going to be going when I need those things. All those kind of things are, are considered, but so at that, we've got about, you know, five to 10 minutes of the warm up. We've got 10 to 15 minutes of working out our exercises and all those kind of things. Next, we're going to talk about a repertoire and you should be spending a majority of your chunk on this. And it doesn't really matter what you're, you choose as that to be, but it should be, like I said, this is when we use that example before of like, I want to be working on. Uh, this song, and I, I know I need to be playing this many songs. This is where you're getting basically the meat of the meat and potatoes dinner is right here. And um, this is this is where you're going to just be playing the songs that you, you want to learn, playing uh, whatever you're going to be doing. If you're performing, this is what you're doing. You're practicing that performance. And be sure, if you can, incorporate something that keeps time. Uh, it's great to just sit there and doodle or play the song, you know, from beginning to end or play a certain section of the song that I need, you know, a couple repetitions on this just because I don't know the parts or, you know, I just need to get a little more familiar with them. Um, but if you, it, the more that you can do this with something that's keeping time, a metronome, a backing track, whatever it may be, um, anything like that, it's going to help you with further, especially when it comes to time to actually perform these things live, especially if you're working with any other musicians. Uh, just being able to keep time and understand where you are relative, you know, the more that your brain is accustomed to keeping time with things and understanding what's happening, what's going on. And you won't have to work that hard when it comes to being with actual other musicians or keeping time with a drummer or keeping time with anything else. It's just second nature because you've already been keeping time with something else. That's just a little hint, a little little note going forward, a little nugget that I picked up along the way. And I've heard many other musicians say, you know, make sure that you're finding something to keep time with. Um, John Mayer, love him or hate him. And I'm, I'm under the love him camp. Um, loves to tell you, he'll say it a million times, you know, make sure you're playing with the metronome. There's too many musicians out there who just are in the bedroom and just playing their songs nonstop. But the second it comes to branching out, collaborating, playing live with other musicians, they're lost because they didn't have that structure. So, Work that in. Number th uh, four out of these five here is fun time. And it's just making sure that whatever you're practicing, those routines, make sure if, even if you had to work on a song that maybe is not your favorite and you're working on one that's, or maybe one that's pushing you very hard and technically difficult, maybe work in a couple 10 to 15 minutes of just working on a song that you know very well and you just love playing. It gives you that, gets you in that mood and it gives you the, the feelings. Hopefully you have songs like that because if you don't, I'm sorry, you're probably not going to succeed because people are going to, they're going to read that on you that you're not having fun. You're not enjoying this. But if you have those guilty pleasure songs, this is the time to play them. Just have fun. Like I said, we want to make this routine something great that you can come back to and that you're enjoying every day. And last but not least is the cool down period. And this is just time where you just, you know, you're just like you would with any other, any workout, you'd take some time just to, if you did a long run, just to do a little bit of walking around, let your body ease into being, you know, sedentary and not doing anything. Uh, for musicians, it's kind of the same thing. For me, my, I gotta be, you know, if I'm being completely honest, this version of my practice routine has devolved a bit. 
And it's become my noodling session where I, I've pushed out like, hey, stop playing around. Or if I came up with a really fun like uh, chord structure or something like that or a riff that I've just made up and it's, re- it's really great. I want to I want to develop this further. I push this to, to the end of my my cool down session where I'm just that's when I'll work on writing new material or working out that chord structure structure you just worked on and all those kind of things or noodling around on different scales and different solo parts. Uh, but whatever it is, just let your let your body, let your mind just ease back into regular life. Get out of that flow. Get out of that mindful state of being a hardcore musician and, and back into real life. And uh, that's it. It helps you wind down and prevents tension in your muscles is what this says. But, you know, that's not the big part. It's just letting yourself, having a way to get out of your practice routine and still enjoying it and getting the most out of your time. So... That there was the structure part, very important. And the next part here is that balancing act that I want to talk about that's super important. And we just touched that upon in that last part, but make practice fun. And only you can really define what makes music fun for you. So of course it's gonna be playing your favorite genres. You're playing songs already that mean something to you and that you wanna share with others. So that's there. that's a huge part of it. But another part of that is stepping out of your comfort zone. And that's gonna sound weird because you know, I don't I don't find being doing something I don't know fun. A lot of people will say that, but then I promise you, if there's a, a genre that you don't usually work with and you pick up a song that maybe resonated with you or you heard and this is kind of fun, and you dive deep into that song and you learn it, not only is it gonna probably give you new techniques to apply to the music that you do work with, the genres that you're working with normally as a musician, I promise you're gonna be so excited just because different parts of your brain are firing and you know, it's expanding your repertoire as a musician. It's giving you whole new you know, tricks and, and things to reach into your bag and use those as you move forward. And I promise that's if that's something that you're not incorporating to what you're doing now, challenging yourself with something new and different from different genres and different styles of music is going to be a huge way to incorporate some fun into your practice routine. The other one I really want to stress and and really advocate for, and and I, I can just see it now that people are going to roll their eyes at me, but you know, to each their own. Use backing tracks; they're great. If you you know like to solo or you need to work on maybe you do some improvisation with other musicians. Uh, pull up backing tracks or just, you know, especially YouTube is so great. If you just type a key that you want to work in, like, hey, I, I want to work on my C major, pull up a, a chord structure that's based in that. And then you can start working on your scales there and see what works. All those kind of things develop different different licks and different parts. It licks as we call them. And I guess that's a guitar thing. I don't know. Anybody else calls them weird things like that. But just using backing tracks can be such a huge thing. And it's one of those things that, you feel like you're working with other musicians when you're not, you feel you're getting that return. And it also plays into that one thing we were just talking about, about keeping time and working with other musicians. It's fantastic for that as well. Um, Beyond that, anything else that you can work into your practice routine that is gonna make it more fun and make you wanna keep coming back to the next time and make sure that, you know, if it's, it's every day, you're going to come back tomorrow, but it's, you know, three days from now, you're excited for that. And you can't wait for your next practice, you know, just find those little things, incorporate in there. So, and set up challenges is a great one that we put on here too. You know, if, and that kind of builds into that. If you are finding that you're just getting too good at something, like I know how to play these songs. I understand the exact same structures. We have this, uh, I am a blues musician. Don't hate me. Um, but we play over one, four, five. I mean, it's really easy to just become complacent and like, yeah, I know what we're doing. But if you're not challenging yourself, you're not finding other, I, I love to go out and find their songs and reference, you know, what's their structure? What are they playing? How could, what, what scales are they choosing to play over these different chord structures? Um, I'll constantly myself, just as a reference, I'll pull into jazz, I'll pull into like some classical music, I, whatever it can be to reference, you know, different ideas different ideas, and then I'll pull that into my practice sessions and start challenging myself as to what would you do here? Can you even play this song? All those kind of things. So find a way to challenge yourself. I can promise you, if you're not challenging yourself and finding a way, when you start to overcome those, get those little wins and figure these things out, 
There's no feeling like it. And you will keep coming back to practice every single time. Last but not least is make your practice personal. And again, as we were stating about this earlier, once you've got the goal, goal setting all taken care of, you know where you're trying to go. Once you've got the structure and what you need to do with your time all set, and once you've figured out which is fun and engaging for you that's going to pull you in and make you want to continue doing, this part is just super straightforward and easy. Um, you know what you need to do. You know what's going to work for you. Find a way to make it about you. How, how it works for you is what this becomes about. And I, I would recommend if you are studious enough to keep a journal for the first couple of weeks, the first month, the first two months of what you did during your practice, what you accomplished, what you didn't accomplish, and all those kind of things. And the more that you're able to go back and reflect as these things you've written, written them down and seen, hey, I got all this stuff done, or maybe I've been following my practice routine, but I don't feel like I'm getting enough progress. I'm not moving forward fast enough. You can maybe look back and see what you were doing. And oh, if I just tweak a couple things here and there, or if I add in a couple different things, I'll start getting more bang for my buck. I'll start getting more time, a return on my investment for my time, all those kind of things. And you're able to really personalize and, and shape your practice around what works best for you. Um, again, one thing that we love to stress, and I really do mean this, and it's the very last point on this, this whole list, is to take the time to celebrate your achievements. And again, if you've taken the time to write down in a little diary or whatever it is that, you know, what you've been doing. It's nice to be able to go back and say, I didn't know how to do this before, but now I can do this with complete ease of mind. I it just, it's become a second nature. It's natural for me. Celebrate those wins. Enjoy those moments. There's things that you couldn't do before, but now you can. I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you know, what are modes? How, how do I use these? And it's not important. I, I don't feel bad if you don't know what that is. It's just one of those things that, as your practice routine taught you things, as you were able to run through them and execute them and find applicable places to use these things, you start to get those wins. Always take time to enjoy those wins. So that's all I got for you today. I know it's a lot, but I promise if you take the time of a, a week of your, of your life to structure out a practice routine that works for you, the returns you're gonna get going forward are just going to explode. Yes, it's exponential. The more you're putting in it, the more you're getting out of it, the less time that you have to put into it, the better you're getting, all those kind of things. So take the time. That's all I can say is take the time. Uh, thanks again. Like I said, we got so many great things coming up. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, follow us. Make sure you don't miss some of these great things coming up. And if you have any questions or if you have something that's bothering you or you might need some help with, reach out to us, put it in the comments, You know, send us an email, whatever it is. Go on Instagram. Uh, we're always talking to people on Instagram, just throw us a message there and maybe we'll make a video about it or some kind of something to help other people out too, because I guarantee if you're going through it, there's others doing it. So just let us know. And again, thank you guys so much for watching us and until the next one, bye.